great to uh, spend some time with you. I'm sure you all know the brand Microsoft and uh, have probably uh, had to use it, whether it's Teams for schooling, whether it's Word to write that uh, report or PowerPoint, or maybe you're into some of our coding um, and hopefully you're all into our gaming and Xbox platform as well. But uh, what we thought we'd like to do today is just share with you a little bit about what Microsoft really does. Um, we have a consumer business, but we also have a business, a research and a technology business. Um, and we have a huge impact in terms of how we interact with customers, industries, partners, students, every part of the world. So the first question I always get asked is, what does Microsoft stand for? What, do, what is it like to be at Microsoft? And uh, you know, to, to put it in simple terms, it's an amazing place to work. It's inspiring. Um, clearly, I'm now not able to change my slide, which is going well. There we go. Um, and, and look, our mission is really simple. We want to empower every person and every organization on the planet to achieve more. And that means in whatever you're interested in. If you're interested in programming and AI and technology, then we've got something for you. But if you're interested in sustainability, changing our climate situation, whether you're interested in you know, helping those with a disability, if you're interested in farming, if you're interested in art, there's something in Microsoft for you. Yes, we have a, a whole lot of technology platforms. We, we have an intelligent cloud. We talk about this idea of intelligent edge and we talk about the idea of tech intensity. And what I mean by tech intensity is there isn't much that we do today that doesn't involve technology. Just as simply as the fact that we're now used to using our phone to get all the information we need when we need it. Technology is infused into everything that we do, but our cultures are what matter. Uh, we live with a growth mindset. We want to be curious. We want to explore. We want to take our passions and, and, and take it as far as we can. Um, we want to be an inclusive company. We want to be a place where people feel that they can bring their best, they can be themselves, that they aren't having to conform to a, a certain style or a certain standard. It's all about how do we help you achieve the best that you can achieve the way you want to achieve that. And we're obsessed. We're customer obsessed. We're Microsoft obsessed. We're obsessed in making sure that we have the most diverse and inclusive range of voices and people and and products available to support all of the different bits and pieces that we want to work with. But as you can imagine, there's lots of technology and there's lots of products that sit behind that. And I'm sure many of these logos or many of these names are familiar to you. Um, there's our gaming suite, uh, which sits with the Xbox and now Xbox Cloud and being able to play across multiple platforms and devices. Uh, we have our modern life world, which is much of what most consumers engage with Microsoft on, whether it's the office suite, whether it's your email, whether it's Teams or Teams Live like we're working on now. Modern work includes uh, our full office automation suite and includes our Surface laptops. Uh, we have business applications. Uh, we have LinkedIn. So for those that are uh, preparing your professional profile. LinkedIn is an incredibly important platform in being able to get out who you are, connect, join communities, have a voice, have a perspective. Um, and then there's our cloud platforms and that includes computing infrastructure, but includes data and AI and machine learning and all of these new capabilities. And they're all underpinned by our security platform. So we've just heard from the team at Westpac about uh, the great work they're doing in securing and and automating their, their businesses. Uh, we're very proud to partner with Westpac in, in helping them. But I always get to ask the question of how do we approach innovation? Where, where, where do I get involved? How do I get involved? And we have so many different aspects to our business. Whether you want to be working directly with our customers and our partners, whether you want to be designing products, or whether you want to be researching for the problems of the future, there's a part of Microsoft that's there for you. And your industry might be, you might have studied a, a degree in nursing. We want you to help us improve medical outcomes for uh, for the world. You might have discussed, you might have done agribusiness or science or biology. 
there's research, there's products, there's customers who are in that industry. You might work in retail today and you every day you look at something and go, why do I do it like this? Surely there's a way I could do it differently. And again, from a Microsoft perspective, there's the sort of information that we're looking for. How do we help organisations empower themselves to do better, to serve their customers, to serve their citizens, etc. So enough about me. What I thought I would do is I would share a couple of videos with you on some of the amazing things that we've been doing at Microsoft. And one of those areas that I've talked about is on inclusion, on being able to provide and use technology to help those that maybe have a disability or a challenge in using day-to-day -day facilities be able to be part of the world in the same way that many of the able-bodied parts of uh, the world take for granted. So let me share one for you. Um, hi, there's no audio at the moment. Yeah, you'll need to turn it up a little bit, unfortunately. I'm sorry, Colin, but there's no audio at all. There's no audio, which is just really quiet. Um, there's no audio at all. There's no audio. Bear with me a second. I will run that audio for you again. Good boy, steady. How's that? We want yep, we can hear the audio. Same ways that everybody else wants to explore their world. Soundscape fills in a lot of the mental map as you move. It makes it effortless and seamless to know what's around you because it's designed such that you can just put it in your pocket and go. DSW Shoe Warehouse. DSW Shoe Warehouse. Cool things happening around town here. <laughs> when I'm with other people, I'm able to gather a lot of the same information my sighted friends or family are getting from the signage around me. And with that, I'm able to participate in, hey, look, what's over there? Desigual. Oh, Desigual is showing up here as well, which is one of my favorite stores. Oh, really? Yeah. Those moments that don't usually happen for me in my life. Using the technology is relatively easy. You have to still concentrate on listening for obstacles, but you then get used to the chatter in the background and you can pick out suddenly something that's of interest to you. It was great telling me all the different shops as I passed, which was lovely, and the different street names as well. Quite often I don't know, you know, which street's which. Approach an intersection. That's you. Goes right. We have a, a beacon set for Nike Store, 248 yards. The beacon has been helpful in approaching different addresses and places in busier areas. I'm getting the bell right about here. Great, so let's just head off that way. Okay, forward. It's been a unique experience to work with the Soundscape team. They have been so transparent, forthcoming, open to feedback. It's been a really dynamic relationship. You have blind people on your team, you're working deeply with agencies like Lighthouse and reaching out and engaging with blind people in different places and from different backgrounds and really making sure that what's being created is aligned with the needs of the community. Fiddler forward. Nice and slow. Left and side. Woohoo! Okay. Hi, how are you today? So uh, as you can see, blending just simple things like mobile phone technology, augmented reality, AI, 
and other content is providing a much more enhanced experience for those with uh, visual impairment. Now, what about if you're into engineering or building new products or capabilities and you need to continually keep yourself updated and up to speed? We partnered with Lockheed Martin on an amazing program that they are running from a, a space perspective. And I know we've heard from the Australian Space Agency earlier, and I thought I'd share just a little bit about what Lockheed Martin are using technology through our augmented reality HoloLens and, uh, and AI to help their engineers build the spaceship of the future. Orion is the only spacecraft that can take humans into deep space, like the moon and Mars. We're just finishing that development phase, moving into production, where we'll be launching Orion about once a year. We're using the mixed reality technologies to benefit our programs, requirements, and challenges so that we can produce spacecraft at lower costs with higher quality and less time. For Orion, we're using mixed reality to assemble the crew seat. When a technician puts on a HoloLens, they instantly see the work instruction instead of having to go through stacks of rectangular data, whether it's paper or another form of a screen. It understands the environment. It's anchored to the structure, and that allows us to place content within the environment. Being able to see the same design together and look through different options allows us to make those decisions more quickly. With every activity, we're seeing significant reductions in touch labor. We see increases in quality. What we found was that we could take an eight hour activity and reduce it down to 45 minutes. We see a reduction in cost. We haven't had a single error that's been documented, which is really exciting. We're partnering with Scope AR, who's using Azure Mixed Reality Services to bring all of this to life. The mixed reality allows us to move more quickly from concept and design, spanning into tests and operations, and possibly even for astronauts in space. So all of these examples are just using tools and technology platforms that Microsoft delivers out of our cloud platforms. Whether they're AI, ubiquitous computing, or people-centered experiences, um, the aim is really to provide a platform that allows individuals, organizations, to be able to envision the future and, and make that a reality. But enough hearing from me about what we do from an organizational perspective. What about hearing from the team that have joined Microsoft in the last couple of years and are living out their career ambitions and goals through the platform of Microsoft? Now, the question that I always get asked is, well, how do I join Microsoft? And as you can see, there are a lot of different ways. Uh, we have education programs that are working with students and teachers in primary schools and high schools. We collaborate with TAFE and universities through skilling development programs, internships. Microsoft has its own Microsoft Academy and internship programs and our traineeship programs. We run digital skills and boot camps. Uh, we have a program with our Indigenous community around digital literacy. Um, we're doing digital skills partnership for disadvantaged women and those that are uh, returning to the workforce. We have enterprise skills programs targeted directly at organizations. So it doesn't matter which industry or which organization you may be working in, you have the opportunity to be able to take on new digital skills and technical skills. Um, we work with nonprofits, social enterprises and startups, um, and we're continuing to drive the Microsoft Software and Systems Academy, which is helping to bring military veterans who have spent their life serving others to reintegrate back into mainstream society and find new roles. Now, many of you may have heard of our chairman and CEO, Sachin Adela, uh, an inspiring man, absolutely amazing individual. And this is my favorite quote of his of all times. He always says to students who are looking to join Microsoft, I would say to them, if you want to be cool, go work with some other one in some other place. But if you want to join a company that's committed to making others cool, come and join Microsoft. And that instills our very ethos, is we're trying to help others make their world cool. 
And with that, Angela, I'd like you to uh, share with us what your journey to Microsoft was. Fantastic. Thank you, Colin. So hi, everyone, and thanks for coming today. So my name is Angela Sibiris, and I'm a cloud solution architect. And so I design analytics and AI solutions on Microsoft's cloud platform called Azure. I work with our customers to understand what problems they want to solve with analytics or AI, and then I help determine which technologies are right for them and help them to implement that solution. So I joined Microsoft a few years ago through the Aspire program, which is the university graduate program. Initially, I did a Bachelor of Engineering majoring in Mechanical and Material Systems through ANU. I learned pretty quickly that most of the materials engineering jobs were in the mines and that wasn't somewhere that I particularly wanted to work. So I worked as a business analyst, uh, learning how to learning how businesses operate and how to improve organizational processes through analytics. And this was interesting, but I missed being technical. So then I completed a master's of business analytics through Melbourne Business School which combined technical analytic skills like data science with real world business skills. And it was after that degree I applied through Microsoft's Aspire program and got the position of a cloud solution architect. And what's great is that I have the foundational engineering skills plus the data science skills to work effectively with my customers. I know what challenges they have and how to ensure the software they use helps them to do their jobs effectively. I can safely say that even five years ago, I didn't know that I would end up here. So each opportunity I have taken has given me a chance to learn more about what I like and what I don't like. So as you're going through your studies, you can look out for intern roles, which can be completed while you're still at uni, as well as the Aspire roles, which are for people who have just graduated from uni. And the next thing I want to talk to you about is what I love about working in the field of AI and the people that I work with. Every AI project is different and they are all about making life better. Whether it's making application processes faster so people don't have to wait as long for their government benefits or detecting trash in waterways to better understand how to prevent the trash ending up there in the first place. And these are both projects that I have worked on. And the other thing that I love is that there are so many different roles that are involved. For example, you have the data scientists and the data engineers, but you also have app developers and graphic designers because most often we interact with AI using an app and creating imagery that is easy to tell a story or interact with. I also get to work with our lawyers to make sure that our AI projects meet all the ethical standards. And I also work with biologists and scientists who are the subject matter experts in the project. So while my role is heavily technical, the people element is so important. Being able to work with diverse teams, also virtual teams around the world, and collaborating effectively is paramount to your success. So you don't need IT experience to build this skill set. Just look at how you do any of your group projects, how you work in your part time job or volunteering team if you have one, or how you interact with your sports team. So I work with a range of cloud based technologies. For example, if I'm working on an analytics scenario, then I might need to look at data warehousing or data modeling technologies. The kinds of people I work closely with are data modelers who use SQL or data engineers who create pipelines which use streaming data from sensors, for example, out from a farmer's field. And another example is AI scenarios. There are a range of technologies that I work with, for example, pre-trained AI models, which you can call with an API. In this case, that would be Microsoft Cognitive Services. You don't need a huge amount of data science skills to use these AI models. But other times, I work directly with the data scientists who build their own AI models. And I also work with app developers, as I mentioned previously, because we need the human-centered design approach to make sure people interact with the AI models the right way. 
We leverage both low-code, no-code app development platforms, such as the Microsoft Power Platform, as well as technologies which people use to design apps from scratch. So if you're thinking about how do I get started, how do I learn about what I like and what I don't like, I strongly recommend to start playing around with some of these no-code, low-code platforms and readily available services to see what you're interested in. For example, you could use our cognitive services and the Power App platform to create a mobile app where you take a photo and detect an object in the image. You can put this together in a matter of days. You will learn a lot about what you do and don't like. If you like the AI models and are also interested in maths and statistics, then maybe data science is for you. If you like the app development and how people interact, maybe the front end design is for you. Or perhaps working on the back end of the apps is for you. I encourage you to test out these scenarios on the readily available platforms to get a better understanding of what you like and what you don't like. And keep trying things out, especially as your interests change. And this will lead you into a career where you keep on working on things that you enjoy. So that's what I wanted to talk to you today about. And so I will now hand over to Tyler. You're on mute, Tyler. That's a good way to start. Um, I'm Tyler. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I guess I wanted to start off with a bit about my journey. So um, going back to being in high school, starting you know, finding my passion for IT in about year 10, um, having one of the greatest IT teachers. Um, just that's where my passion really stemmed from. But throughout high school, I didn't do a tertiary package. I didn't know where I wanted to go. Um, I did a lot, a lot of jumbled subjects of just things that I enjoyed. Um, and yeah, so I, I finished high school um coming out of it with a without knowing what I wanted to do still um I thought that doing a business degree would be a good way to start um which I ended up really not enjoying so I dropped out um and I kind of just started working part-time and I realized that that wasn't really where I wanted to go or where I wanted to be um, and so I started brainstorming about what I did want to do and I thought back to my passion of IT in high school, um, being heavily affiliated with the robotics team. Um, yeah, so thinking a lot on that, so I definitely knew that I wanted to get back into IT, but how to do that, I had no clue. Um, so I jumped on Seek and was looking around and that's when I came across the Microsoft traineeship program um, where so where I applied and was lucky enough to be interviewed by Microsoft and joined their team um, as a part of the traineeship program I do um, study part-time so I'm working five days a week and then I do two evening classes um, at CIT doing my Cert 4 in IT um, which um, has been super great um, and then yeah so the other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about as well is um, some of my passions within IT I think I have I, I really love the culture of women in IT within Microsoft um, it's been super great super supportive um, and it's definitely something that I want to give a voice to the future generation of women in IT. I think speaking as somebody coming from an all-girls school and being a part of IT, you know, sometimes I think that it has a bit of a vision of uh, being sort of like a geeky career. Um, I think it's definitely not um, and that you can make it uh, what you want it to be. And I think that if I was to come away from this giving you guys one piece of advice is that you don't need to know where you want to go um, with your future. You don't have to plan your whole high school degree around, you know, your whole high school around one subject to get into a certain degree, um, especially with IT, it can take you anywhere you want to go. Um, so I think now we have just enough time to jump into maybe some questions. 
um, if anybody wanted to ask some things. Uh, yep, so the first question is for Angela. Um, Angela, has there been any cases where you've had to deal with a data breach? Thankfully, I have not had to deal with a data breach, but this is something that we take so seriously because um, it is absolutely, we are built on trust. And so if anything happens that would then breach our customers' trust, that is something that we take very strongly. So we do a lot of internal training about um, security and data and ethics. So this is very important to us and all of our staff are trained up on it. And it's also a mindset that we bring when we're designing solutions for our customers. We do not want our customers to implement a solution that would then lead to a data breach. So this is something that we um, is a principal design uh, approach. We make sure that security is at the forefront of all of our solution designs for our customers to present exactly this. And we do also have the training that in the event that it does happen, we understand what we need to do to support our customers through this as well. Yeah. Um, the next question is for all three of you guys. Um, what is the work environment like in Microsoft? I'll just let Angela go first because she's on screen. Thanks. Uh, the work environment is awesome. I love it. It's very collaborative. I think I was telling you about all the different kinds of people that I work with and it's great uh, because if you know you can't know everything so you're relying on the people around you and it's a very collaborative environment and it's something that I really enjoy. Yeah, um, touching on what Angela said, um, I am have only just started um, at Microsoft. I'm probably just coming into my second month now and having been in lockdown, I um, haven't actually been in the office all that much, but for the first few weeks that I was in the office, I've met so many different people with so many different backgrounds and it really is a very inclusive and collaborative space to be working in and I can't wait to get back in the office. Yeah, look, what I would say is the great thing about Microsoft is that there is such a diversity of skills, experience, customers. It's a global business. So, you know, every day, and I've been doing this for 35 years, every day I meet someone new, I meet someone exciting. Um, it's fast paced, it's challenging, it's intense, but it's, gee, it's fun. And, you know, we forget that we're working most of the time. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, we only have time for one final question. Um, the last one's for Tyler. What type of topics did your certificate for cover? Uh, so I'm still studying my cert for. Um, so far, I'm doing networking, a lot of networking, um, and a little bit of scripting for the networking. Um, and I think as we get more into it, there'll be a lot more programming that's covered. Um, but it's been great so far, my experience at CIT as well. Um, it's very supportive, um, smaller classes um, and things like that. So I am really enjoying doing a cert for over a uni degree as well. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation and sharing your experience at Microsoft.